5 rules to improve all of your tricks. 3. Break down one trick into four faces. 2. Take off. Most riders focus only this face and believe it's the only one that makes jump good or bad. It's not wrong. This face is important. Because riders concentrate too much on this specific matter, they don't visualize the flow of the whole trick. Those riders can't land in many cases. Taking off happens only in a single moment, but the key points are Body axis Straight air, you don't need to worry about leaning to the side, but leaning to fore and back. Even if the rider is in good position, the angle of the slope will change during the jump affecting balance. Beginners try to jump straight typically, stand straight to their gravity at the lip, even if the lip is inclining. Then, they take off jump on their front leg, which causes a nollie, and it will make their balance in mid-air difficult. But, intermediate riders trying to spin also mess up taking off for the same reason. Try kicking the lip 90 degrees from jump angle. Then, controlling the air will be much easier. When riders initiate spins at the lip, they typically lean toward edge as well. So this time, the rider is affected by the toe to heel axis. To generate spins, edging is needed to make solid base. But because riders can push down on the ground straight, with too much edge angle, they will lose power by pop and from the ground. Also, too much edge angle with leaning their body axis too much will cause them to lose control after taking off. Due to this reason, for riders above intermediate level, edge angle should be as close to the flat base as possible. Then, their body axis will stand straighter and the rider can pop directly from the ground, so more spins and jumping higher can expect. Timing Timing for takeoffs tend to be early. Taking off too early comes with the risk of losing speed, jumping to the side, crashing hard with edge catching the snow on the lip, nollie, and losing balance in the air. The bigger the jumps, the more the risks will increase. So the timing should be not too early, but when the center of the board is at the lip. If you are an advanced level rider, try not to move until your back foot touch the lip. Even if your lower body can't wait long enough, your upper body couldn't. Or maybe your upper body can, but your lower body can't? The timing is always changing due to your body condition, mental condition, speed, and so on. I'm still working on the timing on gentle slopes and with side hits which means it's not that easy to get. So try to practice timing in free riding every time when you are on the hill. How to get off the ground There are three ways to get off the ground. Pop Ollie Nollie Coasting is one of the techniques to take off, but coasting is just going through the lip without any action. So if you want to get off the ground on a gentle slope, coasting doesn't work. Pop is jumping on both feet, which is very natural for us humans. So pop is the easiest jumping skill to learn first for beginners, but pro riders still use it to generate spins. Next, skilled riders can challenge the ollie. It's a very common skill in skateboarding, jumping with only one back leg. This skill is actually required for good control on the toe-to-heel balance first before starting to learn the nose-to-tail balance ollies require. When beginners try ollie, they typically land on their toe or heel edge. So this skill is hard for beginners, but for intermediate level riders, it's a good skill to try for jumping straight. 
If you want to use the ollie to generate spins, controlling it will be much more difficult, so it's usually for advanced riders. But remember that an ollie on the park jumps is not an actual ollie. The ollie is known as a popping with the tail of the board, but the ollie on the park jumps is more like a pop straight up on your back foot. You can't do an actual ollie on the park jump because of the angle of the lip. So, you can't actual ollie on the side hits too. If you try to do an actual ollie on the park jumps, then you must lean greatly over the tail which costs you half backflip in mid-air. A pop straight up on the back leg is very useful at side hits and park jumps. I will explain about this new technique with reasons from the other video. Nolly is there to create more tricks, so it's the hardest skill to jump. It's a mentally challenging skill because you shift your weight on the nose and you might imagine if your nose catching the snow and falling over hard. So Nolly is an advanced level technique. Those skill are necessary to generate any tricks. Because the board needs to leave the snow to be free from any pressure before putting it into any action, so you can jump safely and make tricks easier. As I mentioned before, if the board takes off the lip with less edging, popping straight up is easier and the body axis won't incline, so control in the air will be easier as well. If you keep strong edging until takeoff, you will jump to the side and you will lose speed due to too much pressure on the jump by strong edging. The pop will be difficult if you rotate your body harder. If you can remember that popping hard and rotate hard, then the timing will get harder to adjust to the lip. If you pop harder, your air time will be increased and you can suck up your knees quicker so the spinning force will be increased as well. For straight air, you can suck up your knees easy by popping hard so you will be small in the air making grabbing the board easy as well. You can pop but not by 100%. Popping by 80% may be the best to keep your balance on takeoff. Want to learn more with us and want more challenges? Watch all video tutorials that are only available on our website. You will get more of the world's best theories to solve your problem and boost your snowboarding skills. Get the world's best coaching methods based on the coaching of national level athletes. Boost your snowboard intelligence with us. Snowboard Dojo Wiz, an expert coaching intermediate snowboarders.